All right, guys, what's up? Long time no see. And this time I really mean a really long, long time. Been down in a rut lately. Card's not falling well, you can call it. But uh, our spirits are up. We're, we're just trying to grind back, get our money back. Uh, that's what poker's about. When you lose, you, you need to try to get your money back, whether it's moving up in stakes, um, sitting down at a heads-up table if you've never played heads-up. I mean, it's all about trying new things. Uh, try to try to move yourself into the green. So that's kind of what what we're going to be doing today. You know, we're we're just going to be playing smart, playing aggressive, using our knowledge. Wow. So prime cut um, doesn't look very solid, and we're gonna keep that in mind. You know, we're gonna we're gonna try to isolate him, play smart, do some crazy things. Hopefully. Here we hit middle pair. Um, we're just going for a value bet. We're betting um, 121st of the pot. So we're giving our opponents good pot odds. And we induce the bluff, which is perfect. Now we can do two things. We can min raise. We can pot. We can go all in. Or we can fold. We want action, so we're min raising. And we get a call. This is just dream. And and now our hand only gets better. We just hit two pair. So I mean this this is a point in the match where people are gonna be thinking, okay, well does this guy have a full house? Does he have quads? Um so the worst possible thing I can do is telegraph my hand. If I go all in, they'll think I have quads. So we need to twilight them. We bet thirty seven here. And this is just this is just money. You're printing money. And now now we do have a full house. So now that we've really made our hand, if we even bet thirty, they'll think we have a full house. If we bet sixty, they'll think we have quads. So we need to check here. Hopefully somebody will bluff here. This guy goes all in. Just a dream situation. And we called him. And, and I mean, oh, we just schooled this guy. So, I mean, one thing you guys will see me doing is I'm putting notes down. And that's basically um, just so that later on in the match, I know what I'm up against. Alright, we've we've flopped an open ender. Let's let's twilight him here. If we go all in he'll think we have top set when really we have three high. And we hit. This donkey's out of, out of the tournament and we're the chip leader. I mean if you guys aren't the chip leader uh, within four or five hands, you're doing something wrong. Um, you're you're either a losing player or you're not getting lucky. And some people think, well, I can't control luck. Yes, you can. You can control luck. That's why it's called luck. Now we're now we're really gonna switch gears now. Now we make a ninety raise three times the big blind. Now people are thinking, okay, this guy has aces, kings, queens, jacks, and we're going to rep that. 
when the flop see now now we can rep a set of tens I mean that's the beauty of this play now how do you rep a set of tens we just smooth call Man, he played it well. You got to give him credit. We doubled him up. No biggie. I mean, we're in good shape. You know, we want to play controlled. We want to play slow. We don't want to do anything crazy, okay? I mean, tournaments, sit and goes, it's all about controlling your emotions. You just... As long as you play smart and you make not too many mistakes, you'll be fine. And we got the suited A6, not too thrilled about it being suited, but what can you do? I mean, you can't get off suit hands um, always. Sometimes you get suited cards and suck it up and play them. We flopped an open ender. Okay. Here we're gonna shove, but we're gonna shove hoping hoping that we get a misclick from one of these players because we don't beat much. So hopefully these guys have top set and they're just gonna misclick and fold by accident. See, she could have misclicked, but she didn't, and it cost her. She made a mistake, and now she's out of the tournament. I wish I could put a note on her, but she's already out. And we're we're back to the chip lead. And we're just gonna try to get another misclick by shoving. I mean, the beauty of inducing misclicks is, if somebody has aces and they misclick, they fold the hand. So, I mean, this guy could have misclicked right here. We'll never know. I mean, one thing you can do to kind of gauge in to see if people are misclicking is just keep on shoving, going all in, and then if they call with aces, that means they didn't misclick. But if they fold, they might have misclicked. They might have just had a weak hand. Um... We're about to find out. Hopefully this guy misclicks and folds. He calls. We're alive. He sucks out. What a suck out. Can you believe this guy? He turns the straight. Wow. Let's see. Um, if, any of you, if, if any of you guys know how to spell doesn't, I'm not really sure. D O S N apostrophe T does end. I don't know. Misclick. I mean, in, in all honesty, it doesn't really matter how you spell the word as long as you understand what it, what the word probably is. Now I, I wish I could bet twenty here, but it won't let me. I, I want to bet min, but I can't. So I'll bet double pot, 520. This guy goes all in. We got a pair, we got a straight draw. There's no way in hell we're folding. Can you believe this? I mean, first he hits the gut shot, and then he hits the run, run, or flush. I mean, if I've ever seen a more rigged site, it would be called Poker Stars. But if I've never seen a more rigged site, it would be called Full Tilt. And that's why I don't play on Poker Stars. I mean, it's, it's probably two and a half times more rigged than Full Tilt. I mean, so so let, let's let's look at what just happened. I mean, this guy sucked out. We hit our six. 
And then he hits like something. And then we have this guy like drawing dead. And he's doubled up. So in reality, I should have 2,000, 4,000, 1,000. I should have about 7,000 in chips right now. Um, but what can you do? Not much. You just got to suck it up and play. Mom? Mom! Mom! Lunchables! Can I get a Lunchable? Okay. Um. This guy 4 bets, we're 5 betting. Or he 3 bet, we're 5. No, if we have turkey, I'm not eating it. Only ham. Ham and cheese. <sighs> okay, I mean, um, we're raising for information here. I mean, they usually say the fourth bet is aces. In this case, we're trying to see if the fifth, the sixth, the seventh bet See? And right there we get our information. I mean, let's look at the flop action. I mean, I bet he raised, I raised, he raised, I raised, he called. Turn. I bet he raised, I raise. He makes a much bigger bet. And now Roy, Roy Rowling is like talking in the middle of our hand. Um, so I'm going to report him for that. But this guy's mistake here is he raised it to 800. And so I know he's got a big hand. Ham! Yes! God, what the heck is my mom doing, man? <laughs> I don't know. She's always like in the kitchen but she can't she doesn't do much in there okay so I mean uh, we we could have lost a lot more on that hand okay I mean we flopped a pair we could have gone broke if we were stupid about the hand instead we bet for information we played smart and we let go okay most of you guys who are watching my videos, you guys probably lose money. And the reason is is because in this spot, you guys would never think, hmm, let's 4-bet flop, let's 4-bet turn. You guys, you guys aren't thinking like that. You guys are either saying, oh, I have second, second top pair. I mean, I'm, my hand's not good. I'm going to fold. Well, that's stupid. Also, equally stupid would be going, oh, I have second top pair. This hand's good. I call her. I raise. Uh, very stupid. I mean, make a series of small raises. Find out where you're at. Because it could be good. It might not be good. You need to raise for information. I mean, we're only nine hands deep, and we've, we've been dabbling in almost all the pots we've won four pots okay we've won almost half the pots we've played so I'm really confident we're down we're down to about 11 blinds it's not a big deal I mean as soon as my mom brings me my lunchables I'm gonna have a full stomach I'm gonna have energy I'm gonna be able to win this tournament I mean, hopefully we can cash. Top three pay. Or we're down to seven. And we just raised to isolate. And this guy shoves.
if this guy called, we would be able to squeeze, but... With 10-6, our hand might not be good. So, when your hand is not good, it's not an automatic fold. First, you have to calculate the odds. So, it's 2,000 plus 50 plus 100. That's 2,250. 574 to call. I'm probably a 6 to 1 dog. Um, if he has kings, I'm 9 to 1. I fold. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting out. He had queens. I mean, I called his hand out. He had queens, and I, I put him on kings. I mean, I mean, it was a mistake by me. I should have put him on queens, but in hindsight, in hindsight, I stick to my read. He played it as if it was queens. Um, just his his raise to. Hmm. <coughs> To 2,054 just seemed like kings kings to me. I mean, if it was a little less, it might have been queens. But, I mean, I'm not going to back down from my reads. It's one thing I'm not going to do. We just hit our pair. And we got a draw to go with it. Drawing a backdoor straight. It's probably... You guys are doing math when you're playing. Um, calculating odds to call you need to include backdoor draws backdoor um, straights flushes trips full houses even quads I mean board comes 8-8 eight, eight, I got quads I'm gonna call for information here there's too good of a chance that I'm up against the ace high flush I need I need to hit an 8 or a 5 to continue because if I hit an 8 or a 5 and he has a flush I have outs if I miss the 8 or 5, I don't have outs to beat his ace high flush. Wow, he puts me all in. I'm, I'm just going to pretend I'm thinking. I mean, in general, when you're going to fold a hand, it's it's a good idea to milk the clock for the full 20 seconds. There. I mean, come to think of it, um, now that we're closing in on the bubble, I mean, there's only four left. Top three pay. It's a good idea to just be milking the clock every single hand. Um... That's just a play I've learned from my tournament experiences. It works out pretty well. <sighs> so we're just going to let the, the clock go down here. And we'll time out each time the guarantee that we milk the clock for as long as possible <laughs> if I had to put her on a hand I'd put her on a set of queens I'd put him on a flop straight I'd put these four guys um, just rags they folded now she's slow playing the set of queens. He's got her. Um, he's going to bet 250. He bets 300. I mean, it looked like it was going to be a 250 bet, but it ended up 300. You know, I mean, I'm going to stick to my reads. I can't call every single hand, okay? I'm not a magician. I'm not a genie. Um... I'm not Patrick Antonius. And this guy's starting to milk the clock as well. This guy's smart.
if you guys want to check out some cool music um feel free to search a cool band called cut copy it's like this um kind of disco dance alternative rock they got some sweet songs definitely helps you grind So I mean not not much action, you know. I've just been kind of taking it easy. I'm going to wait for um a decent hand. Um But my main uh focus right now is just trying to time out it every single hand. And this strategy, along with trying to induce misclicks, um, it's just going to make it easier for you to win tournaments. I mean, here we're playing a sit and go. Um, but this could, I mean, it could be a tournament. Um, it really doesn't matter, because as long as the player misclicks, he's misclicking. As long as you're timing out each hand, you're timing out. It doesn't matter where you're doing it. You could be doing it at a cash game table. And this is just a dream scenario because not only do I get to time out preflop, now that I'm going to purposefully check preflop, now when the flop comes around, I get to time out on the flop as well. So this is just a um, dream. But here I can't time out all the way or else I'll sit out. We flopped an open ender. Before we call though, let's milk the clock all the way down. Uh, my two personal favorite songs by Cut Copy are Hearts on Fire and Lights and Music. Um, check those out, but if you don't like this type of music, um, I would suggest not listening to it. Okay, now this becomes a mathematical equation. 2,600, 60, 60, 180, 3,150, 4 to 1, odds on the straight, um, 15 to 1 on my money. Um, I have a feeling this guy is drawing to a better straight. I fold. So, I mean, our timing out has gotten us this far. Now it's time to do some misclicks, some, some, some good misclicks. Um, we pick up 310 offsuit, which is a fine hand. We got bottom straights. We got top straights. We got flushes. We got flushes. We got pairs. We got trips. Um, you probably don't understand poker if you're not understanding the value behind um, eight gappers. Actually, this is only a six gapper. And that and that's um that brings up a good idea actually. In my next video, um I'll probably be discussing five gappers, six gappers, and seven gappers because I don't think people just understand how to play those hands correctly. Or where you've got outs and this donkey just calls off his stack with jack five unfortunate but um... but he's smart so i mean i can understand his play <sighs> somewhat of a short video uh... it's unfortunate considering i haven't uploaded many videos lately but you know i might maybe after i'm done eating my lunchable um, I might just make another video because I really felt a victory there. I mean, first five hands of the tournament, I mean, we were dominating. And then 
just we got unlucky. Um, anyway, hope you guys learned something. Peace out.